chapter 16. I will tell you just a little. Poor Blossom, Uncle Henrik said, laughing after dinner that evening. It was bad enough that your mother was going to milk her after all these years of city life. But Anne-Marie, to do it for the very first time, I'm surprised Blossom didn't kick you. Mama laughed too. She sat in a comfortable chair that Uncle Henrik had moved from the living room and placed in a corner of the kitchen. Her leg in a clean white cast of the knee was on a footstool. Anne-Marie didn't mind their laughing. It had been funny. When she had arrived back at the farmhouse, she had run along the road to avoid the soldiers who might still be in the woods. Now carrying nothing, she was in no danger. Mama and Kirsty were gone. There was a note hastily written from Mama that the doctor was taking her in his car to the local hospital, that they would be back soon. But the noise from Blossom, forgotten, unmilked, uncomfortable, in the barn had sent Anne-Marie warily out with the milking bucket. She had done her best trying to ignore Blossom's irritated snorts and tossing head, remembering how Uncle Henrik's hands had worked with a firm rhythmic pulling motion, and she had milked. I could have done it, Kirsty announced. You only have to pull and it squirts out. I could do it easily. Anne-Marie rolled her eyes. I'd like to see you try, she thought. Is Ellen coming back? Kirsty asked, forgetting the cow after a moment. She said she'd make a dress for my doll. Anne-Marie and I will help you make a dress, Mama told her. Ellen had to go with her parents. Wasn't that a nice surprise that the Rosens came last night to get her? She should have waked me up to say goodbye, Ellen Kirsty grumbled, spooning some imaginary food into the painted mouth of the doll she had propped in a chair beside her. Anne-Marie, Uncle Henrik said, getting up from the table and pushing back his chair. If you come with me now to the barn, I'll give you a milking lesson. Wash your hands first. Me too, said Kirsty. Not you too, Mama said. Not this time. I need your help here since I can't walk very well. You'll have to be my nurse. Kirsty hesitated, deciding whether to argue. Then she said, well, I'm going, I'm going to be a nurse when I grow up, not a cow milker, so I have to stay here and take care of Mama. Followed as usual by the kitten, Anne-Marie walked with Uncle Henrik to the barn through a fine misty rain that had begun to fall. It seemed to her that Blossom shook her head happily when she saw Henrik and knew that she would be in good hands again. She sat on the stacked hay and watched while he milked, but her mind was not on the milking. Uncle Henrik, she asked, where are the Rosens and the others? I thought you were taking them to Sweden on your boat, but they weren't there. They were there, he told her, leaning forward against the cow's broadside. You shouldn't know this. You remember that I told you it was safer not to know. But, he went on, as his hands moved with their sure and practice motion, I will tell you just a little because you were so very brave. Brave, Anne-Marie asked, surprised. No, I wasn't. I was very frightened. You risked your life. But I didn't even think about that. I was only thinking of, he interrupted her, smiling. That's all that brave means, not thinking about the dangers, just thinking about what you must do. Of course you were frightened. I was too today, but you kept your mind on what you had to do. So did I. Now let me tell you about the Rosens. Many of the fishermen have built hidden places in their boats. I have too. Down underneath, I have only only to lift the boards in the right place, and there's a room, there's room to hide a few people. Peter and the others in the resistance who worked with him, bringing them to me and to the other fishermen as well. There are people who hide them and help them along the way to Gilly. Emery was startled. Peter's in the resistance? Of course, I should have known. He brings Mama and Papa the secret newspaper, De Free Dance, and he always seems to be on the move. I should have figured it out myself. He is a very, very brave young man, Uncle Henrik said. They all are. Emery frowned, remembering the empty boat that morning. Were the Rosens and the others there then, underneath, when I brought the basket? Uncle Henrik nodded. I heard nothing, Emery said. Of course not. They had to be absolutely quiet for many hours. The baby was drugged so that it wouldn't wake and cry. Could they hear me when I talked to you? Yes, your friend Ellen told me later that they heard you and that they heard the soldiers who came to search the boat. Anne-Marie's eyes widened. She asked, I thought they went the other way after they stopped me. There are many soldiers in Gilead and all along the coast. They're searching all the boats now. They know that the Jews are escaping, but they are not sure how, and they rarely find them. The hiding places are carefully concealed, and often we pile dead fish on the deck of the well. They hate getting their shiny boots dirty. He turned his head toward her and grinned. Anne-Marie remembered the shiny boots confront confronting her on the dark path. Uncle Henrik, she said, I'm sure you're right that I shouldn't know everything, but please, would you tell me about the handkerchief? I knew it was important, the packet, and that's why I ran through the woods to take it to you. But I thought maybe it was a map. How could a handkerchief be important? He set the filled pail aside and began to wash the cow's udder with the damp cloth. Very few people know about this, Anne-Marie, he said with a serious look. But the soldiers are so angry about the escaping Jews, the fact that they can't find them, that they have just started using trained dogs. They had dogs, the ones who stopped me on the path. Uncle Henrik nodded. The dogs are trained to sniff about and find where people are hidden. It happened just yesterday on two boats. Those darn dogs, they go right through dead fish to the human scent. We are all very, very worried. We thought it meant the end of the escape to Sweden by boat. 
It was Peter who took the problem to scientists and doctors. Some very fine minds have worked night and day trying to find a solution, and they've created a special drug. I don't know what it is, but it was in the handkerchief. It attracts the dogs, but when they sniff at it, it ruins their sense of smell. Imagine that. I remembered how the dogs had lunged at the handkerchief, smelled it, and then turned away. Now, thanks to Peter, we will each have such a handkerchief, each boat captain. When the soldiers board our boats, we will simply pull the handkerchiefs out of our pockets. The Germans will we all have bad colds. The dogs will sniff about, sniff the handkerchiefs we are holding, and then roam the boat and find nothing. They will smell nothing. Did they bring the dogs to your boat this morning? Yes, not 20 minutes after you had gone. I was about to pull away from the dock when the soldiers appeared and ordered me to halt. They came aboard, searched, found nothing. By then, of course, I had the handkerchief. If I had not, well, his voice trailed off and he didn't finish the sentence. He didn't need to. If she had not found the packet where Mr. Rosen had dropped it, if she had not run through the woods, if the soldiers had taken the basket, if she had not reached the boat in time, all of the ifs whirled in Amory's head. They are safe in Sweden now, she asked. You're sure? Uncle Hendrick stood and patted the cow's head. I saw them ashore. There were people waiting to take them to shelter. They are quite safe there. But what if the Nazis invade Sweden? Will the Rosens have to run away again? That won't happen for reasons of their own. The Nazis want Sweden to remain free. It's very complicated. Anne-Marie's thoughts turned to her friends hiding under the deck of the Ingeborg. It must have been awful for them. So many hours there, she murmured. Was it dark in the hiding place? Dark and cold and very cramped. And Mrs. Rosen was seasick, even though we were not on the water very long. It is a short distance, as you know. But they are courageous people, and none of that mattered when they stepped ashore. The air was fresh and cool in Sweden. The wind was blowing. The baby was beginning to wake as I said goodbye to them. I wonder if I will ever see Ellen again, Anne-Marie said sadly. You will, little one. You saved her life, after all. Someday you'll find her again. Someday the war will end, Uncle Hendrick said. All wars do. Now then, he added, stretching. That was quite a milking lesson, was it not? Uncle Henrik, Anne Marie shrieked, and then began to laugh. Look, she pointed. The god of thunder has fallen into the milk pail. Is that what they call the cat?